coming out of prison was actually harder than going in. What we're fighting here is so detrimental to my future that prison is just nothing. Why am I bound to my hometown? I'm not a murderer, okay? These Just Stop Oil activists could be facing prison. We couldn't talk to them about their case, but we did want to know how the cause they're fighting for could have a huge effect on their futures. I obviously don't want to go to prison in future. I don't want to experience any of that, but I need to fight for my life and I need to try and do that in, in whatever way that I think can work. But you are still human and mm. the possibility of a prison sentence would scare most people, to be fair. I already spent eight days in prison. You know, all, all prisons vary. For me, it was kind of a doable experience. Um, it wasn't the kind of horror that I see on, you know, when prisons are depicted in film and TV shows. In terms of like going to prison and like that kind of, um, those kind of consequences, mm. I'm like so terrified. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's either that or watching everything I love, like burn right in front of me at the hands of the government. Louise and Rose were both arrested after Just Stop Oil demonstrations and were both later released on bail. In there, you know, you're kind of doing all you can. You know, you can't do anything in there to help fight for your life, to help tackle this climate crisis. Whereas when I came out, it's like the whole weight of the world fell on my shoulders again. Oh, there's still a climate emergency. The government still haven't listened. My friends and family and I still can't understand, you know, why I am on an ankle tag, why am I bound to my hometown? I'm not a violent offender, you know, I'm not, I'm not a murderer, okay? Are you worried about your actions as an activist potentially affecting your future? Yes, for like the obvious reasons, like having a criminal record, but no for the reasons in, realistically for the rest of my life, I can't imagine doing anything else other than this, and if I was going into a job that was going to punish me, for fighting for my future and for the future of like many to come. I don't think it would really be a job that I want. Yeah, I'm really worried about my future because of the climate crisis, because, you know, I don't want to be not able to find food and water in the next 10, 20 years. I can understand why people go, why are you causing such a fuss about this? Just chill out, <laughs> you know, but we can't chill out. And all the scientists, the United Nations are warning us, it's now or never, we're on a, you know, we're on a highway to climate hell. Not only am I now terrified for the climate, you know, 1.5, 2 degrees, tipping points, all that. I'm now terrified of how our government is taking action against people who are trying to protect our future. And the government are trying to go even further. This is reprehensible behaviour, Madam Deputy oh Speaker, God. and I will not tolerate it. A new law has been proposed that would make it harder for activists to cause disruption without facing a penalty. Now we see the draconian anti-protest laws being brought in. The government argue it is necessary so that people can go about their lives without interruption. Everyone should be aware that that public order bill affects them, it affects everyone, you know, it, it's stripping everyone of their human right to protest, their democratic right to protest. It's absolutely insane that this is how they're trying to tackle it. I shouldn't have to be protesting. I shouldn't even have to be there. So I'm doing this for, you know, my cousin's future right now. She, you know, she's about younger than me and I honestly want to be able to look her in the eye and tell her that I did the best I could for her life and, you know, for maybe her family's life.